everybody, welcome to another episode of DeLorean Tech, and today we're going to show you how to install the DeLorean Parts Northwest Adjustable Fan Switch. So the adjustable fan switch replaces the Otterstat switch that's in the car here in the engine compartment. It's going to give you a lot greater degree of control over when your fans kick on. So the switch will actually allow you to set any temperature between 180 and 240 degrees for radiator fan activation. It's an analog switch and installation is really easy. The original Otterstat is even left in place. So the switch comes pre-assembled on this custom aluminum bracket right here and is actually mounted using an existing bolt here on the pontoon. So no drilling, no wiring changes required. Simply mount the switch, insert the temperature probe into the nearby cooling pipe, which is down here, and then plug the existing wires into the terminals and you're good to go. It uses a precision made gas pressure thermocouple for accurate temperature monitoring. And it is in fact designed for the extremes of the DeLorean engine compartment. Okay, so here's what comes with the kit. You get two of these hose clamps, a 12 inch length of silicone self-fusing tape, and the actual adjustable fan switch assembly itself, which includes a bracket. So the fan switch has a dial right here that you can use to adjust when you want the fans to turn on. These terminals right here connect to the Otterstat wiring. So first thing you want to do is to loosen the straps here on the Otterstat pipe and just make sure you don't spill too much coolant on the ground <laughs> like we just did. So you just want to let that drain for a while and once it stops draining then go ahead and undo that strap right there. So here's where we jumpered the Otterstat. So this Otterstat that's in the car right now has failed, so we're going to be putting the new adjustable fan switch from DeLorean Parts Northwest in, but for now we have the Otterstat jumpered. We're going to go ahead and disconnect that jumper. We'll just set the uh, wiring to the side for now. So when you're draining this thing, you might end up losing about a gallon of coolant. So when you're doing this procedure, you want to make sure that the cooling system is cool before you start. If the engine is cool, you don't want to burn yourself. Also, you want to make sure that the fill cap on the coolant bottle is open to relieve any residual pressure in the cooling system. So the instructions say to drain the coolant from the radiator. We're just going to drain the coolant from the pipe right here. We're not going to drain and replace all of the coolant in the system. There's still a lot more coming out. Okay, so we disconnected the piping, and now we're gonna clean this off right there because we do have some corrosion. This has to be very clean. Otherwise, if it isn't clean, it could leak. So for the switch location, you're gonna wanna locate the attachment stud right here. If yours is rusty, you're gonna wanna put some knocker loose just to make sure that when we go to remove that nut, you don't damage the stud that's there. So now we're gonna apply the silicon tape that Toby includes with the kit. So you need to wrap that around the pipe right there like this. This is after you've thoroughly cleaned the end of that Otterstat pipe. This is to prevent leakage from the system after installing the temperature probe. There we go. So here's the unit. We're gonna unravel the temperature probe wire. You don't need to unravel the whole thing, just enough to reach the Otterstat pipe. And you want to create a little bend right there.
So that bend right there and the capillary tube should not be bent at a sharp angle. It should be rounded. You don't want to create a kink in that. That's how it should look right there. So a little bit of silicone spray on there just to ease the installation of the the hose back onto the pipe. So there's going to be two pipe straps that you're going to install here. So you're going to need a 13 millimeter to loosen that nut right there. So you want to route the adjustable switch and the capillary tube underneath this hose that's coming out of the pontoon right here. So just go ahead and loosen that nut right there. Okay, and now that you have the nylock off of that stud right there, we're gonna go ahead and mount the fan switch. Go ahead and tighten that nut back on. So there's the completed installation. So the green wire connects to the terminal mark two, and the other wire connects to the terminal mark C, as shown. That's the Otterstat wiring right there that we just reconnected. So after the assembly is complete, you're gonna want to refill the cooling system with new 50-50 mix of antifreeze. And then after that, you're gonna wanna properly bleed all trapped air from the cooling system. This is probably a good opportunity to install the Wings Be Cool self-bleeder kit if you don't already have it. Aid in bleeding the radiator, we're gonna install a valve on the bleed line and uh, this will allow trapped air to be removed easily and with less mess. Okay, we're going to cut this hose so that we can install the new bleeder valve. That's the hose that connects to the radiator up here. drain pan ready to go after you've made the cut and drain and you pull it out of the system. So this valve right here is included as part of the Wings Be Cool self bleeder kit. So once you've got the valve on, just go ahead and tighten down the hose clamps. So this is the bleeder hose that comes with the kit. And this goes right on the end of the valve right there. So now that we have the 
leader valve installed in the front next to the radiator here. We're gonna go ahead and fill the system back up with coolant and then we are going to bleed the system down. Then we're going to make the adjustments to the new fan switch that we installed. So we are bleeding the system cold right now after filling up the coolant bottle. I don't see any air. <laughs> no air coming out? Mm -mm. Okay, good. So we're bleeding the cooling system cold initially to get the air out of the system here before starting up the car and bleeding the remainder of the air out. Let's go ahead and start up the car. <laughs> Started up the vehicle, you want to make sure that the hose clamps are tight. You don't have any leakage coming out with that capillary tube it's coming out of the hose right there on top of the otter staff pipe. So, this is going to be a process. So, after you warm up the car a few times, take the car out for a drive. You're going to want to recheck to make sure those clamps are tightened down. You want to make sure you don't have any leaks at that point as well. So in order to set the adjustable fan switch, you turn the knob to the fully counterclockwise position and the fan should turn on. And then you dial it clockwise until the fans turn off. And then you'll make final adjustments based on your temperature gauge to set the temperature you want the fans to come on. So just as a demonstration, we've got the fans to engage right now. We'll just back that knob off a little bit. Turn them off. So you want to keep your eyes on this temperature gauge here. So when that temperature gauge reaches the point where you want your fans to turn on, then you go ahead and turn the knob, adjust the knob until the fans turn on. So that will establish the set point at which your fans will turn on. So now that we have coolant flowing through the system, and the temperature is starting to increase. We're gonna to start to adjust the fan turn on set point. Once the thermostat is open and you've got coolant flowing through the system, just go ahead and replace the coolant overflow bottle cap. The temperature gauge is pretty close to the second tick mark. So it's not advised to have the fans turn on when the temperature is still pretty low. So the fans just engaged. So right at the midpoint right now. The fans are still running. So if you notice your needle isn't dropping after the fans have engaged, that could be a sign that you still have some air in the system that you need to bleed out. Hmm, that's good. So we just bled a lot of air out of the system after turning the car off. The car wasn't cooling like it should, so that's a sign that we had some additional air trapped in the system and we just bled it out. So if the radiator isn't getting 
hot like it should. That's another sign that coolant isn't circulating properly. So we just checked the overflow bottle and there's still plenty of coolant in the system. We're gonna go ahead and start it back up again. Temperature's dropping and fans are still on. Oh wow, that's going fast. Yeah. So there must have been quite a bit of air trapped in the system. So we just let it out. The fans are still on. So we want to monitor the needle here and set the fans to turn off at the appropriate point. So we just adjusted the knob on the adjustable fan switch so that the fans will turn off at this point right here. And we're gonna run the motor and get it warmed up again to see at what point the fans turn back on. So if we give the engine a little bit over here, that's gonna help the coolant flow through the system better. So the fans just kicked on, the needle slightly above the midpoint. So this is the setting that we're going to maintain. So the fans just turned off and they turned off right when the needle hit the middle tick right there. So we're going to go ahead and maintain this setting. But we're still going to monitor the Otterstat pipe to make sure that the capillary tube connection isn't leaking. So the fans just turned on again, so slightly above the tick is where we want the fans to turn on. So if you want to have your fans turn on before it gets to the tick, or if you want to have your fans turn on sooner, you would turn the dial on the adjustable fan switch counterclockwise. Okay, so we've completed the installation of Toby's adjustable fan switch. Right now we're looking at the underside of the pipe, so far it's dry, but you're going to want to monitor the connection because it might start to drip or weep. So monitor the hose clamps, you might have to tighten them up after a few hot and cool down cycles. Uh, but we've got the knob in the right position, the fans are turning on and turning off. We have our radiator bleeder installed right here. So if you ever have to bleed air from the radiator, we can, we can do that again. Uh, thanks for watching. That's the video. If you have any questions, make sure you drop a comment down below. Thanks.